take your filthy paws off my omnibus, you damn dirty collector. I, it had to be done, right? We're talking about Planet of the Apes. This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, the home of collected editions. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. The Planet of the Apes, the original Marvel Years omnibus. So, let's go ahead and get started. And welcome back, everybody. So what we're looking at here is the Planet of the Apes, the original Marvel Years Omnibus. As a matter of fact, it's actually called the Planet of the Apes Adventures Omnibus. And before going any further, I do want to thank David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market and book market on April 18th or 19th, depending on where you get your books. So this is our very first Planet of the Apes omnibus. I hope that they end up collecting the magazines. That's the one that I remember uh, getting some as a kid. But this right here collects the comics. And I'll talk a little bit about that here in a second. Let's look at this spine together. Actually, let's do this. On the left-hand side is your direct market cover. That one there is supplied by Gil Kane. The standard edition cover on the right is supplied by E.M. Gist. And... Something that you may notice is that the spines are different. So everything else underneath the dust jacket is the same. And speaking of spines, let's take it back to this. So here's the cover, Planet of the Apes, Adventures, the original Marvel years, and the Marvel logo down there, which this awesome image. And I said, speaking of the spines, because that is a very small spine. Well, this book doesn't really contain that many issues. As a matter of fact, it's only 11 issues that is contained in here. But is it the thinnest omnibus? Close, but that title still belongs to Devil Dinosaur Omnibus. That one has 176 pages. Planet of the Apes has 224 pages. So it was close. And I did want to do something else here. And that is to put it next to one of the fattest omnis, the unbeatable Squirrel Girl, just so you can see the big difference. I do appreciate the fact that they really did try to make that small enough where they didn't have to do it this way, like in Devil Dinosaur right there. So they did at least try. We know it's significantly smaller. So let's take a look at the back, including all the covers of the issues collected in here. The Simeon Sci-Fi Classic in the Mighty Marvel Manor. You have the ISBN down there with the retail price of $100. Rated T, Marvel logo, the 20th Century Fox logo. And what it collects right here now underneath the dust jacket it's no apes no man just this landscape which if you've seen the movies pretty much know where this landscape is now i am going to open this up we are talking about some old movies here i mean the first movies from 1968 and then beneath is in 1970 i think but just in case you haven't seen those movies uh spoilers because these are adaptations of the first two movies the classic movies. All right, so let's go ahead and crack this open and talk about the story and show off the artwork here. Okay, let's go ahead and crack this open. This black end sheets. You have an image of an ape right there, Planet of the Apes Adventures, the original Marvel years, and more landscape. And here is the collection editors, the uh, covers to the dust jacket, and right here is the credits to each of the comics so you have planet of the apes and then beneath the planet of the apes for six issues the last five issues so this does collect adventures on the planet of the apes one through eleven so you have doug minch george tusca doing the first six issues mike esposito which is really nice to see him on here tony mortalero and dave hunt and george russo's doing the colors he also comes back as the colorist for the beneath part but Alfredo Alcala takes over the last five issues. Here's your table of contents where you're going to find each of these issues kicking it off with adventures on the planet of the apes. So, as I mentioned, this book has 226 pages. So, in case you haven't seen the movie, I do have to talk a little bit about this. Uh, this was originally published from 1975 to, I think, it might have ended in 1976. But before that, under the Curtis Magazine's logo, Marvel was publishing the stories, or rather adaptations of the movies and new stories from 1974 to 1977. And what this does, what the first 11 issues of Adventures of, 
on the Planet of the Apes does, is take those black and white stories, adaptations of Planet of the Apes and Beneath the Planet of the Apes, and colorize them. So, so if you've never seen the movies, I'm not going to spoil any of the twists and turns that happen here, because there are a lot of twists and turns. And I say that, so, I know it's, to some people it's ridiculous, right? We're talking about a comic that came out in 1975, based on a movie that came out in 1968. Who the hell cares? Most of the stuff has been spoiled. Believe me, as the guy that makes these videos and sees all the comments, some people still care. So just in case, I'm just going to go over the minor premise of what's going on through these particular issues. So yes, there were some twists and turns in there because the original screenplay for Planet of the Apes was written by Rod Serling of Twilight Zone. So you know you were going to get some twists and turns. And all of this, of course, based on the books. So there was a book, uh, and that's what they turned into a movie. But this is an adaptation of the movie, not the book. Because even the ending is the adaptation of that movie because they did change... The movie ending. All right, so what are we looking at here? Well, we meet a group of four astronauts. We meet Taylor, we meet Dodge, we meet Landon, and we meet Stewart. And they're going on some kind of space mission. Taylor is getting everybody ready for just pretty much sleep because he knows they're going to be in some kind of state of suspended animation for years because their mission is taking them off into the distant planets. Something goes wrong, something malfunctions, and they are hurled across space. So here they wake up and they realize they've crash landed. Unfortunately, Stuart, the only lady in the group, did not make it. I think there was an interesting line by Charlton Heston who played Taylor. Something about our Eve. Um, well, this guy says, <laughs> this version says, that settles it. Three Adams and no Eve. I think in the movie he said he she would have made a great Eve. Something along those lines. So they realize that they need to get off the ship because it's sinking. So Landon, Dodge, and Taylor all go off to land. They don't know what planet they're on. They don't know exactly what's going on. And the first issue kind of does a really good job of following the script and the scenes from the movie. They're sitting around trying to figure out how to survive. Obviously, they figured out early because they're all scientists or one of them is a big scientist, that you can breathe the air here. So wherever they are, you can still breathe the air. And eventually they run across some humans, or what they think are humans, but they're humanoid creatures, that don't talk. They communicate through grunting. And these humans are running away from something. Something horrible is coming their way, and it's an ape on a horseback. And what this ape is doing is hunting down these humans so they can become slaves. So in here, Landon gets trampled. Dodge did not dodge. I made that joke as a kid even. Um, and he gets shot. Even though it looks like a laser in the movies, I know they were just using guns and rifles. And even Taylor, what ends up happening, gets shot in the throat and he loses the ability to talk. So the apes take back Taylor and the remaining, or the humans that are left alive, and put them in cages. And in here, he starts to become friends with a couple of people, uh, Zira and Cornelius. And there, you're going to see another character in here. That's Dr. Zaius, this gentleman right here. Now, Zira is telling him that, look, this particular human is different than all the other humans they've captured. He's trying to communicate with them. He can write things down. So this, of course, leads to him trying to escape, getting recaptured, and yeah, trying to communicate with Zira, becoming really good friends with Zira and Cornelius. Now, what's really interesting about the relationship between Zira and Cornelius and Taylor is that sometimes they still treat him like a pet. So they give him a lady friend to hang out with. Uh, this is Nova or who will later become known as Nova. And they kind of thought, okay, well, he needs a mate because he doesn't need to be alone. So that's where she comes in. But I, I like that, that they still, even though he can communicate and they see that he's smart, they still kind of treat him a little bit like a pet. Meanwhile, there's a couple of secrets that the apes are hiding, mainly Dr. Sayas. He knows what's going on. So in an attempt to escape, this is where the famous line comes from. 
And you can find out what happens to Landon, and you can find out exactly what happens to Dodge, because we do see Dodge again, just not in the same way. This is where the line comes from when he gets captured again, and he says, Take your stinking paws off me, you damn dirty ape. And just like the movie, it's kept there. So, as you can see, this is an exact adaptation of the movie. And as I mentioned, there are some twists and turns through here, mainly with the big secret, the Forbidden Zone, and of course the very classic ending that leads into the next story arc. So that's what the first six issues are. This is all wonderful artwork by George Tuska. So, uh, yes, Taylor can talk again now, and that's where the, <laughs> people freak out, or the apes freak out, because this particular human can talk. There's ridiculous puns like that all over the place. Now, let's look. Now, we get to issue number seven, which begins the Beneath the Planet of the Apes story arc, and this goes all the way to issue number 11. Here's your cover, but we're going to skip a couple of pages, because... This story picks up immediately where Planet of the Apes ended. So there's that twist ending, and we see Taylor with Nova again, and he's just distraught for some reason. So they decide to just take off again and go and find something else. However, they find this wall of ice, and he disappears into the wall of ice. Now, there's a little story behind that. It's Charlton Heston did not want to come back and do a sequel, but he agreed to it as long as he could just appear for a few minutes and the money they were going to give him, they he just said, just donate it to charity. You don't have to pay me. So they did keep him, so you can find out exactly where he is by reading the book or watching the movie if you haven't seen it. And instead of Taylor, we get another character. So this is the character of Brent who pretty much followed the trajectory that Taylor's ship took, and it brought him to the exact location that Taylor and his two, or I guess three friends, uh, came to. So he's there with his uh, crewmate, and the crewmate ends up dying, so now it's just Brent by himself. He's the sole survivor. And he realizes that he's no longer anywhere near where he's supposed to be so wherever taylor is he's got to go out and search for him and he notices that this girl is wearing a dog tag that says taylor and he's like hey wait a minute you know that guy awesome take me to him so you know he can communicate and they end up going to a city in this one they introduce a newer character a kind of a general type of character uh ursus he ends up leading a rally for the apes to conquer this forbidden zone because we're about to meet another part of the Planet of the Apes, if you will. So, they end up going, but before we do, both Nova and Brent get the help of Zira and Cornelius. They're back, and they're willing to help them out. Now, in the Forbidden Zone, we get to find out another secret of what's going on. And there's mutated people down there, and we will skip to issue number 10. Yeah, there's very little I can say about this. So, in here, you find out that these mutants are... They all have telepathic powers, and they're all being led by this character named Mendez, who's in charge of the cathedral. And they all worship something, and that something becomes a huge part of this story. And I can't say anything else about that in case people haven't read it or seen the movies. I will say that out of the five original movies... I think most of us can agree that this is the least favorite one beneath the planet of the apes so we can see why maybe they series got canceled with issue 11 i wish it had kept going because i would have loved to see more color adaptations of this but who knows maybe one day we'll get some kind of collection for the black and white magazine because that went on for a while and i think in the uk it was so popular that they even the way it was collected they took kill raven stories and they change the dialogue up so he can be an ape hunter. It's pretty interesting. Now, as far as the extras, though, there's just one extra in here. And that is the Planet of the Apes Adventures, the original Marvel Years Omnibus, the standard edition cover. So, no letter pages. But then again, I don't know if... I mean, if you had these comics growing up, please let me know that they have letter pages. So, this feels more like a Marvel Masterwork collection, honestly, with... The lack of extras and no letter pages. 
But I guess they decided to make it an omnibus to see how well uh, demand there was for these type of collections. I hope it's well enough to get at least some black and white collections. Because I would like to see that stuff collected. Now, let's look at the binding. It is sewn binding, 224 pages. There's, don't need an eye. Or, or at least there's not one. And the way that it lays over towards the front. So I guess you can see. There are some spread pages. There's a couple spread pages. And I, I can't show them, unfortunately. Uh, That's the way it lays over towards the front. So you can see the gutter loss right there. Which is very minimal. And I can't really show the ending of that. Now, this is printed at the iMac printer. And one of the things I've noticed still with this one is the smell. I don't know. People who have said it's uh, does it smell like dry paint? And in other iMac printer Omnis, I keep them open for about a month and then I read them and then I have another month to read them and make a video. With this one, I just got it a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so I didn't have that much time to read it. And I opened it up and I noticed that the smell was still there. But it's not quite that smell that people describe as a dry uh, paint smell or a chemical smell. It's, it's 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 not a pleasant smell, I will say that. As far as the paper quality, it reminds me of The Thing. If that makes sense. The, the paper stock is thick enough. There's still some bleed through, but honestly, I mean, there's bleed through here. In the Devil Dinosaur Omnibus, it's that kind of bleed through. It's minimal, but it's there and it's here too. Let me see if I can find a couple pages. And it's usually when there's a lot of light colors, like this white here. Uh, through some blue, you can see some of it come through. But, I mean, it's got to be, you've got to be looking for it. Uh, maybe through the yellow here. I mean, if you really look, you can see bleed through. But, I mean, it, it's there. It's just uh, something I wanted to point out for the people that care about that stuff. But that's it. That, as they say, is that. If you're interested in purchasing this book, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you're in Europe and you're interested in buying these books, definitely check out Walt's Comic Shop in Berlin, Germany. They have the cheapest pre-order prices, flat shipping rate of 12 euros for all EU countries, emails answered within 24 hours, waltzcomicshop.com, and you can use the code near mint condition at checkout and get free shipping for all EU countries with your first order over 40 euros. That's Walt's Comic Shop, your reliable source for Omnis and premium collected editions in Europe. Ding! CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They have excellent shipping and prompt and helpful service. Check out their bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. And don't forget that CGN also takes pre-orders. That way you don't miss out on the hottest releases. And they are currently running a special promotion for you Minties. If you're a first time customer, after receiving your order confirmation email, reply back to that email and let them know Near Mint Condition sent you their way. They will then apply a free shipping promotional credit to your next order in the US. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. That was the content, the page count, and build of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you have memories of the comics or the magazine or, of course, the movies or if you read the original book. If you have any questions, leave your questions down below. Don't forget to smash that like button on the way out. Check us out on Patreon and Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. Everyone, stay healthy and safe out there. Much love.